Hi everyone, I am Dr. Joseph Nyandraj and this is Dr. Logic 360 where your health gets smarter and simpler. Every 10 seconds, someone dies from a preventable heart disease and the shocking cause is the way the world eats today. This is the exact opposite of what our ancestors taught us. From Tirukkural in Tamil Nadu, India to Japan's Longevity Islands, the secret was always the same. Stay till the end. I'll show you the one eating principle shared by Japanese and ancient sage Thiruvallavar, now proven by modern science. Let's start with what obesity truly is. Obesity is not just weight. It's hormonal. It's inflammatory. It's metabolic. Over 1 billion people now live with obesity in this world. Yet, BMI does not tell the story. Let's see why BMI does not tell the true story. Obesity is classified based on BMI. In Western population, BMI between 20 and 25 is considered normal. And in Asians, 18 to 20 is proven to be associated with low cardiovascular risk. But I'm going to tell you that BMI does not properly predict your cardiovascular risk. Patients with normal BMI can have extremely high cardiovascular risk. Then what predicts your cardiovascular risk is waist circumference. In Western population, the normal waist circumference in men should be less than 102 centimeters and in females, it should be less than 88 centimeters. In Asian population, in men, the waist circumference should be less than 90 and in females, it should be less than 80 centimeters. Let's see why the waist circumference is a better predictor of cardiovascular risk than the BMI. In our body, fat deposits in various parts. The fat which deposits under your skin and in the gluteal region are metabolically inactive mostly and they are harmless. However, the fat which develops or deposits in our abdomen, in the belly and around the heart, around the liver, around the kidney and around the blood vessels are harmful and are the killer fats. That is why the waist circumference, which is the direct measurement of the fat around your belly, is a better predictor of cardiovascular risk. The fats secrete some hormones called adipokines. When there is imbalance between good adipokines and bad adipokines, the body suffers from inflammation, which drives most of the diseases which patients with obesity have. So here's how fat becomes fatal. As I said, these abnormal fat deposition produces inflammation, which leads to plaque development in the arteries, particularly in the heart and in the brain, leading to heart attacks and strokes. It also causes insulin resistance, leading to the development of diabetes, which doubles the cardiovascular risk. It also increases your blood pressure, predisposes you to heart failure, also increases your chances of atrial fibrillation and sleep apnea. Science is only catching up to wisdom return 2000 years ago in Tamil Nadu, India. In his poem, which are couplets, he mentions that don't eat until previous meal is digested, which mirrors intermittent fasting these days. It also tells you to eat with moderation. This exactly matches the Japanese 80% rule. It also tells you to eat only when you are hungry. This prevents emotional eating, which we know is bad. Also, it tells you to eat what suits your body and not what tastes good. That also reflects our personalized nutrition, which we try to adapt these days. Now let's travel from India to Japan. In Okinawa, one of the world's blue zones with the highest number of people living past 100 years, they practice a method called Harahachibu, 
which means stop eating when your stomach is 80% full. They say it before every meal like a prayer, hara hachi bu, just to remind them to stop eating when their stomach is 80% full. So the benefits are it prevents calorie overload, it reduces visceral fat, it reduces your insulin spikes, it reduces inflammation and keeps your waistline lower and reduces your risk of diseases including hypertension and diabetes. So remember Harahachi Bu. So when two ancient cultures 6,000 kilometers apart, Indians and the Japanese give the same advice, you know it is universal truth. So how do you apply these principles every day? So when you wake up, start with the warm water to kindle your digestive fire and eat very light breakfast only if you are hungry, no mindless eating. The main meal should be your lunch, which also allows for intermittent fasting. The largest meal of the day, as I said, should be your lunch and it should include all nutrients, including proteins, carbohydrates and fat. Eat slowly and stop when you are 80% full. Harahachi Bu. The dinner should be the lightest meal. It could be soups or salads and it should be before 7.30 p.m. There should be three hour gap before sleeping. Snacking breaks all these rules. So please avoid snacking in between. I think the practice that we have to eat in the morning and at noon and at 6 p.m. is a myth and there is no scientific base to this. So please consider eating when you are hungry, when your previous food has digested and stop eating when you are 80% full and eat only the food which your body accepts. Then let's see how to exercise. Aim for 150 minutes of cardio, particularly brisk walking. People who walk more live longer. Try to get at least 150 minutes of moderate exercise every week. You can break this into 30 minutes a day, 5 days a week. Avoid running please. High impact running can damage your knee joints over time. Walk fast. Don't pound your knees. Add strength training 3 days a week like lifting weights or using resistance band. This will boost your metabolism, protect your bones and build lean muscles. Also do stretching and balancing exercise three times a week, particularly if you are over 50 years of age. As you get older, stretching, yoga and Tai Chi become even more important. They improve flexibility, balance and stability and reduce the risk of your falls. So combining good eating habits along with regular exercise will result in 5 to 10% of reduction in your body weight. If that is not enough, then you may consider medical management after consulting with your doctors. There are few recent medications which have been shown to be beneficial in reducing a weight along with cardiovascular benefit. These medications are called GLP-1 medications and they include semaglutide, commonly known as Ozampic or Vigovi, Tersipatide, commonly known as Zebbound or Monjaro. These medications results in 15 to 20 percent weight loss. They also reduce your cardiovascular events irrespective of your diabetic status. And if these fails, you could also consider bariatric surgery, which can have 20 to 30 percent reduction in your weight. This is most effective for severe obesity. These tools will help the body return to what our ancient forefathers practiced naturally. Eat mindfully, eat moderately and eat purposefully for a longer and a healthier life. Thank you for listening. This is Dr. Joseph Nyanraj and this is Dr. Logic 360 where your health gets smarter and simpler. Thanks for joining.